It was Passover week, so I came to Jerusalem early. I was among the crowd that came in with Jesus. What a day that was! Jesus was riding on a donkey and we were walking alongside him. I don't know who it was, but one of us took off his cloak and laid it in front of Jesus' path and shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! And suddenly all of us did the same, laying our cloaks in front of him and shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! As we got nearer Jerusalem, the crowds got bigger and other people joined us. Some of them cut down branches from the palm trees lining the route. They waved them and laid them down in front of Jesus too. We were all shouting and singing. It was brilliant. Those of us who were really close to Jesus could sense the prophecies coming true. This was surely the coming of the kingdom. Jesus, the Messiah, was riding into the holy city of Jerusalem to claim it as his own. The Romans would finally be defeated and the reign of God would spread out from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Well, that's what it felt like then anyway. That was surely the plan. It must have been the plan. But the plan soon went wrong. Just four days later, and Jesus was arrested. And the crowds that had welcomed him as a king were now calling for his death. And then on the Friday, he was executed, crucified. What should have been a victory became a defeat. And what was worse, it was as though Jesus just accepted it. No struggle, no fight. What about all the legions of angels at his command? I felt like my world had just ended. I wanted to go back home and just hide away. But it was nearly the Sabbath, and so I stayed. Not that I felt like celebrating. I met up with some of the other disciples. We went back to the room where he had shared his last meal before he was arrested. But we didn't talk to each other. We just sat in silence. The shutters closed. In darkness. The hours dragged. I didn't notice the day turn to night, and I wouldn't have noticed the morning either if I hadn't been woken by knocking at the door. I thought it was the authorities come to arrest us as well. But it was some of the women. They said they'd been to the tomb and found it empty. Then they said that they'd seen an angel who had told them that Jesus had risen from the dead. Well, you know what women are like. They were hysterical. I couldn't cope with their hallucinations. Jesus was dead. That was all I knew and I didn't want anything to do with their false hope. So I left. I went back home to Emmaus. Simon came with me. The cool morning air must have woken us up a bit. We started talking to each other, trying to make sense of what had happened. We just couldn't understand it. And yet all the while, I couldn't shake what the women had said out of my mind. Suddenly, we noticed there was someone walking alongside us. He started to talk to us, asking what we were on about. I couldn't believe he hadn't heard about any of the events of the past week, and so I explained them to him. I told him about our hopes for the Messiah, and how it had all ended in disaster, and then about how the women had thrown everything into confusion with their story. But then he turned to us and told us we hadn't understood the scriptures. He explained what the scriptures really said about the Messiah. Wanting to know more, we invited him to stay with us for supper. When we were at the table, he gave thanks and broke bread. It was then that we recognised him. It was Jesus. The women were right. No sooner had we realised than he was gone. Oh, he was real all right. There's no doubt about it. Without waiting a minute longer, we ran back to Jerusalem to tell the others. Jesus is alive! <laughs>